Welcome back. Hopefully the audio's a bit better in this one. I was aware that the microphone was picking up the mouse movement and some of the keys as well. I've repositioned it, so hopefully it's not quite as bad. So this is CTF submerged as two words, apparently. Um, this must have been built around 07, 08. There's not much to say about it. So, oh come on, red. Yes, you can tell because of the red. Oh, I'm trying to get my bearings actually. Uh, oh, that's right, yeah, so it's called Submerged. Um, because we all know uniform blue distance fog means uh, underwater. Oh, that's... Uh... <laughs> yeah, that's off to a great start, isn't it? That's... Uh supposed to be a, you know, gently moving train. I'm not quite sure what's uh, happened here, but something's not right. Yep, yeah, that's uh, a good introduction as any to this map, I suppose. Um, so yeah, it's supposed to be uh, underwater. If, uh, that's not uh, I say obvious, uh, yeah. <laughs> so this is my uh, Microsoft Paint work circa <laughs> 10, no, 15, 20 years ago. This is just a kind of uh, moving tunnel, I guess. Um, so you've got nothing to do except till you get spat out here. Bases are effectively symmetric, uh, very little uh, to do. Um, let me come down the stairs here. Eh, uh, where's the flag? That's a question. Um, again, I this map is I don't even know. Yeah, see, that's not supposed to take uh, a second. <laughs> I think of a. Uh, Right, you know what? Let's let's just pause this. I've just went into the editor and uh, changed this from one second to twenty seconds, which I think would be a bit more reasonable. I'm not sure why it was just set to one second. Um, because this is about the speed it's supposed to go, and there's supposed to be all sorts of fancy underwater effects making this look, you know, not this abysmal. Um, but. You know, it's a bit uh, late for that now. And just as before, the physics of the mover is really uh, wonky. I shouldn't have... It's a bit of a digression. That is a custom-made mesh made from the solid geometry brush. And if you look up uh, whatever's left of the you know map editing guides for this engine, I'm sure one of the first things is don't make movers out of brushes. But sometimes you've just got to live dangerously. And again, this place should be kind of like Bioshock, you know, water pouring down, running over the place, maybe a little pump thing down at the bottom. But you know, this was thrown together very hastily. The actual idea behind the gameplay, I guess, uh, the flag's supposed to be here, I'm not, I mustn't have put it in yet. So you would grab the flag, and if this train was here, you could jump in it. And I think the idea was you'd come in here, and after a few seconds, doors would kind of close, and it'd be a sort of fancy airlock, water lock, whatever you want to call it. Uh, so you'd then have a few moments of peace in this train with the flag, and you arrive at the other end, and you hopefully can't. I think what I was going for, and there's other maps which have done this, so the trains take you straight from one flag to the other. But obviously they have to be there and you know they'll go back and forth and like that. Whereas these uh, these kind of tunnels up here are obviously always available, but you've got to fight your way up, so it's a kind of strategic decision of do you wait for the mover and stand your ground down there or do you fight your way back up through their base and jump in here? 
don't think this would have played very well. It's very, very claustrophobic. It would have that problem of you'd be spawning in the middle of existing fights. Uh, it'd probably be just very claustrophobic. What I think could be fun, you know, sometimes the absolute uh, the maps that are real messes can actually be quite funny, non-stop action. Uh, but I don't know why I'm wasting time speculating on how it might have played. And again, the scale was just totally wonky here. Look at the size of that door. <laughs> this would have been a spawn point. Um, that's quite a high quality texture for 2003, actually. Um, so yeah, I guess there's not much more to say about this. It's pretty... Well, not very good. I think this map, what I wanted for the underwater bits is they'd fancy airlocks here. You get in and doors come down and floods with water and the thing goes off. And that, that is quite relatively easily done in single player games, in Bioshock, Bioshock 2, etc. But trying to get it to work in multiplayer, there's the issues with synchronising everything. Something I can never work out with how to get doors which would close with the close into the train and stay with the train, you know, like actual train doors do. You got stuff like... I tried it and you'd get in this, the doors would close and that would shoot off and the doors would just be stuck there floating in mid-air. And again, there's a mapping guide out on how to do it and I could just never get my head around it. I think this map would have worked far, far better instead of being underwater, uh, in air quotes. If this was, say, two buildings over a canyon, um, and these would be like little cable cars. Maybe the bits up top could be jump pads or conveyor belts or air tunnels. So instead of this absolute minimum... Oh, that's... Uh, oh, we'll get onto that in a minute. Instead of this absolute bare minimum underwater, uh, make the bases bigger, have a nice wide open breezy canyon, bright sunny, and these would be, as I said, cable cars or actual trains, not just this. <laughs> this, yeah. I think that would have looked and played far better. Um, can you look at this? What, what, what is going on here? Um, so let this say... Uh, it should be, yeah, it should be triggered by me just making contact with it. Yeah, I think this is the uh, windows which are supposed to be moving with that thing. And uh, here they are, and that is the actual brush that I... Oh dear. That's better. So what you're looking at there is uh, a brush, I say the solid geometry of a level, which you then uh, convert into a mesh, uh, which is the actual mover. And again, you're not supposed to do it, um, but this is... It, the alternative is you make a bunch of separate meshes and try and synchronise them all together. So, you know, you'd have a mesh for the box, separate meshes for the window, separate meshes for these kind of little barricade walls here. Um, but it's just too much complexity. It's not something this is particularly good at. Um, so most of the maps with movers was literally a single mesh and that was it. There's no fancy movers following other, other movers trying to synchronise with airlocks and whatever. It just would have been way too complicated. Um, but you know, that's what I was uh, going for and uh, the fact that it's never been done well. I guess the one thing I can say about this map is there's not been a lot of time put into it, you can probably tell. It's very um, bare bones, flat lighting, not a lot of decoration, the scale is all over the place. I mean, just look at this! Uh, these stairs are just off, everything's off, everything's wrong. <laughs> but, as I said, it's just a very quick throwing it together.
And again, that's the, uh, the, the black square you're seeing ahead there. There's a hard-coded draw distance in this, and it will just essentially go to black, and I think that's what it is. Uh, that, that's the engine just saying, it. that's it, I give up. Uh, that's so far away. And there's no reason these bases couldn't have been much closer with, you know, slower... Uh, you know, slower times for the movers, and this is just a, a physics volume. Literally, just you step in this, and it just fires you forward at ludicrous speed. So that could have been a lot shorter distance and slower. Um, and I'll say this doesn't make a lot of sense. See that once you're a map hey, editor, this is the sort of thing you might notice. Um, and you think you'd notice it in real life, but okay, so there are doors there. Now, what's on the other side of it? Nothing. <laughs> Uh, there, there's bits like that. Again, Bioshock 1. It actually runs off this same engine, would you believe? It? It's not Unreal Engine 3, it's Unreal Engine 2.5 with a bunch of stuff stapled onto it. Uh, this is a bit of a digression, but in Bioshock 1, there's bits you can see the default texture. Uh, and we'll get on to that. Basically, when you first create geometry, it has this horrible yellow bubbly texture just to make it clear. Uh, and there's a few bits in Bioshock 1 where you can actually see that. And there's also bits with a uh, level jump that doesn't make sense that I can see through the illusion, basically. Uh, it's probably not something you'd notice I'm saying, unless you're looking for it or had indeed made levels of your own and you can kind of see all these little tricks. These little bits of geometry that don't actually make sense. And you think, oh, it's a fake backdrop, not a... Uh... Yeah. See, that texture looks absolutely abysmal. But that looks okay. Um, but again, it's probably just scaled up too much. Um, yeah, so I think that's it for... It's not even CTF because there's no flags. And this is probably the worst thing we're going to be seeing in Devastation. Um, but for completeness, here it is. Next up is DTT liner, uh, which also isn't very good, but hey, I've got to go through it. Well, see you then. <laughs>